Lord, everyone. Welcome to my father's house midweek Bible study. I'm so glad to be here tonight with you. Um, it's uh, been really different. We miss you. Uh, we miss gathering together. We miss fellowship. Uh, we look forward to the day that we can actually congregate and not only connect spiritually, but connect with each other, shake each, shake each other's hand. Uh, look each other in the eyes and say praise the Lord but I'm so glad that we've been able to take advantage of social media and technology for the church doesn't stop and we're just so glad to be here today on behalf of uh, my pastor Pastor Phil Anaya and uh, my English pastor Abel Neary uh, we welcome you to Wednesday night Bible study amen I want to um, speak faith to you tonight. I want to speak truth. I want to speak life today. Uh, it's a confusing time. I, I, I still can't, I am amazed at uh, what has taken place over the last four weeks. How the entire world seemingly is shut down and we are in quarantine. Uh, for four weeks it's been, and, it, and at times it seems it goes by really fast. It's gone by really fast, yet at times it seems it's gone by really slow. And uh, But yet, in spite of all this, in spite of things that just keep, it seems as though the facts keep changing. It's as though that uh, we live in a world of false news and fear-mongering and all. We live in an information age, and we don't know who to believe, and where to turn, but I want you to know there is still an absolute truth. There is still a rock that we can stand on. For Jesus said, my word shall endure forever. And we can bank on this today, church. We can bank on this today, visitor, that the word of God is true. The word of God is absolute. The word of God has stood the test of time. And I want to read to you a few passages. Jesus said, He who has an ear, let him hear. And I want to maybe have a hearing check tonight. Maybe some of us need to get our ears checked. And the Bible says as follows in the book of John, chapter 6. Verses 28 and 29. Then they said unto him, they said unto Jesus, What shall we do that, me, that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he sent. This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he sent. Let's pray. Father, we come before you at this time. We're so grateful to you, God, for giving us the ability, for the enabling, the anointing, Lord. Thank you for our young people, God, who uh, know God, who know technology, who are able to accomplish things that we've never accomplished before and reach people that we've never been able to reach before. We pray that you would bless God, uh, each one that is hearing today. We pray that you would bless each one in our church, each member, Father, we pray for. We pray for anointing, Lord. I need you today, Lord, and I ask all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, you know... We're living in the last days. I want you to know that. We are living in the last days. We are living. There is nothing that prohibits Jesus from coming today or tomorrow or next week to take his church. There is nothing that stands in the way of Jesus coming for his church. The Bible says that we are living in the end times. Amen. And the times that we are living in, the Bible tells us, are uh, a season, are the beginning of sorrows. 
The Bible in Matthew chapter 24 calls this the beginning of sorrows. And if this is truly the beginning of sorrows, and we know that the beginning of sorrows are equivalent to a birth pain that an expectant mother will feel or a contraction that she will have as, as she gets closer to the birth of her baby. And as she gets closer to the birth of her baby, those contractions, those birth pains become stronger and more frequent. Jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows. These are the beginning of birth pains. What we are experiencing today in this quarantine that has taken place nationwide and worldwide. And if that's the case, if a contraction to a pregnant mother is a warning that her baby is soon to come, then God is speaking very loudly today. And it's up to us to hear what he is saying. And I want us to turn to the book of 2 Samuel. He that has ears, let him hear. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And I want to read a passage in the Old Testament. And it says as follows. Therefore David inquired of the Lord and said, You shall not go up. And he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly, for the Lord will go before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. What an interesting story in chapter 5, verses 17 through 25. It is a story of two battles. It is a story of two de decisive battles. And God gives David the victory in two completely different ways. But the Bible says here, and I want to read it out of the NLT. And again, David asked the Lord, what to do? What am I to do, Lord? And the Lord says, do not attack them straight on. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. And when you hear, and when you hear the sound of marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on alert. Be on alert. That will be the signal. I like that. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17, Now when the Philistines had heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all of the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it. And he went down to the stronghold. All of the Philistines... The enemies of God, the enemies of Israel, the enemies of David, when they heard that David was anointed king, they went to search for him, and David heard of it. And he went into the stronghold. If this is your day of trouble, and when you go through your day of trouble, and you will go through your day of trouble when you do. Church, visitor, God always has a strategy. God always has a battle plan. God always knows what to do. Nothing ever takes God by surprise. And the Bible says that David went into the stronghold. And when you face your time of trouble, whether that be now, Maybe there's job uncertainty. 
Maybe there's future uncertainty in the time that we live in. What do you do? Here's what David did. He went down into the stronghold. I want you to know Jesus is our stronghold. Jesus is our stronghold. He is our hiding place. He is our fortress. He is the one we go to in times of trouble because he always has a plan. He always has a strategy. As a matter of fact, he is very specific in terms of what he would have you to do. The question is, are you tuned in? The question is, do you have ears to hear what the plan is? Many times we sit watching, waiting for something to happen. Jesus says, it's not time to watch, it's time to hear. It's time to listen. And it says in the Bible, in verse 18 of chapter 5, And the Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So David went up to Baal Perazim, and, da and, and David defeated them there. Listen to this. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies. Listen, he has broken through like a breakthrough of water. And some of you need a breakthrough right now. You need a breakthrough. You need a spiritual breakthrough. Maybe something is dominating your life. Maybe fear and anxiety is dominating your life. I want you to know you need a breakthrough. Maybe you have an unsaved loved one. Maybe you have an unsaved family member or friend that you are praying for. You need a breakthrough. Amen. And God will give us a breakthrough. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal, Perizim. And they left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And the Lord gave David a certain strategy there, and they broke through. But the Philistines mobilize again. The Philistines mobilize again. You see, the enemies of God are relentless. The devil is relentless. And they mobilize again. The Philistines do. And the Bible says, And therefore David inquired of the Lord. And he said, And the Lord said, You shall not go up, but circle around behind them, and come in front of the mulberry trees. Listen to this. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. Be on alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you. Amen. God himself would lead the armies in charge in the charge against the Philistines. You see, church, when God goes before you, there's no need to fear, but there is a need to follow. There's no need to fear, but there is a need to follow. In order to follow, you need to be able to hear. We need to have our spiritual ears on. God will make a way, but we must do exactly as he says. That's why the Bible says we do not walk by what we see. We don't walk by sight. And being that we don't walk by sight... We do not let the things that we see dominate us. I'm talking faith. The Bible says faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. It is the substance, the confidence, the assurance of what we hope for. What are the things that we hope for? They are things that we cannot see. And they are the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, 
For our light affliction is but for a moment, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we do not look at the things which are seen, but that the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm not talking about being positive. Someone said, let's just be positive. I'm telling you that is a secular theology. I'm telling you that is a secular thought. That is a new age thought. Well, I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking, for that draws from within. I'm talking about faith in a li living, breathing, almighty God. For the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm talking about walking by faith and not by sight. I'm talking about hearing what God has to say. Amen. One day Jesus was hungry in the book of Mark chapter 11. And he walked up to a fig tree. And it wasn't the season for figs. But Jesus was hungry and walked up to the fig tree and cursed it. And you know what? He was with his disciples, but nothing happened. At least not immediately. Nothing happened, at least not outwardly. And the disciples might have thought, yeah, he might have missed this one. He might have, he might have, I don't know, but he might have missed it. And if you would have looked at it like the disciples from the outside, nothing happened. And they walked away. But the very next day they came and the tree was withered up from the root and from the ground up. But here's what really happened. The minute, the moment, the exact second that Jesus spoke to the tree underneath the ground, what was not visible to the eye, the root began to shrivel up. And even though it looked all right from the outside, from the ground up, something was happening. That's how faith works. That's how faith works. It's trusting God when you don't have all the answers. Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. That's so opposite of us, right? We want to know everything. We want all of the answers filled in before we move. We want all of the answers, but we know this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We walk by faith once again, not by sight. Don't let what you see hinder what God wants you to hear. Here's the problem. We spent too much time watching. Well, I spent last night watching the news. <laughs> How many of us watch the news. There's nothing wrong with watching the news. But sometimes we can spend so much time, quote unquote, watching, and we wonder why we get up depressed and discouraged. Because we're watching. Don't let what you see hinder what God wants you to hear. The Bible says in Romans 10 17, so faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Don't go by what you see. Go by what you hear. Amen. Second Samuel, once again, it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. Not when you see it. Then you shall advance quickly for the Lord will go before you and strike the camp of the Philistines. God said, I don't want you to be focused on what you see, but I want you to hear. And when you hear the sound, when you hear it, God will go before you. Amen.
When you hear it, don't go by what you see, but by what you hear. The prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. The Bible says everything was dried up. They were right in the middle of a famine. A three and a half year famine. Amen. It had not rained. There were no crops. Everything was dry. There was nothing. And the Bible says, and then Elijah in, in verse 41 of chapter 18, Elijah said to King Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for it, there is the sound of abundance of rain. What did he see? He saw everything dry. Everything shriveled up. He saw famine. He saw cracks in the ground where there had been no rain for three and a half years. But Elijah heard the sound. <laughs> he heard the sound of a mighty rainstorm coming. Oh, I want to hear the sound. I want to hear the sound. Church, do you want to hear the sound? Do you want to hear it? You got to get tuned in. You got to get plugged in. You got to get connected. But I hear the sound. It's different from what my eyes see. It's a contradiction. And when God begins to work by faith, it's always a contradiction. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. It's dry outside. It hasn't rained. But I hear the sound. So here's the question you got to ask yourself. Am I going to watch what I'm going to watch? What are you watching right now? Man, if I, if I stay in front of the TV and spend all my time in front of the TV listening to the fear mongers, listening to, I don't know if it's false news, there's so much information going on out there. There's so much misinformation going on. But we have the Word of God that stands the test of time. So the question is, are you going to watch what you're going to watch and see what you're going to see and let that determine fear and worry? Or are you going to listen for what God is going to do? I believe God wants to do something. I believe there is spiritual warfare taking place like there has never been before. Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God will always turn it around. I don't care how bad it gets. If God allows it, God will use it. Amen. Am I going to listen? Are you responding to what you are seeing? Maybe you need to take a little more aspirin now. Maybe you got a headache. Or are you responding to what heaven is saying? What is heaven saying? You will never hear defeat coming from heaven. You will never hear, I'm losing from heaven. It's just not in God's vocabulary, church. I'm losing defeat. I don't know what's going to happen. Nothing takes God by surprise. Are you going to live by what you see? Or are you going to live by what you hear? Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's right. This is what James says in James chapter 1, verse 19. Let every man be swift to hear, Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. We got that turned around sometimes. We're quick to get angry. We're quick to speak, but slow to listen. Faith comes by hearing. Sometimes we interrupt God by our words and our complaints. It's time to be quick to hear. We're talking about hearing the word of God. Slow to speak. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. It doesn't matter how I feel about this situation. What matters is what I'm hearing from the word of God. And sometimes 
Sometimes it's best for me just to shut up and listen. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's the life of faith, church. That's the life of faith. You can be up, that's how you can be up in a down world. It's crazy right now, it is. I'm the first one to admit it. We've never seen anything like this. You can keep it on the news. You can keep it on there all day, it'll bring you down. Or you can say, I'm listening to another channel. We need to get on another wavelength. We need to get on another channel. This hasn't taken God surprise. By surprise, some of you may not have fingernails left. You might have bit them all off. I want you to know God has all of his fingernails still. God still has his fingernails. I'm sure that's in the Bible somewhere. God has all his fingernails. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. I'm so glad that we serve a great God. If you don't know God, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're a visitor, if you're listening in for the first time, or maybe you've been listening in these few weeks, this is my fourth week of midweek Bible study, I want you to know that Jesus has the answer for you. Jesus wants to be your Savior, but are you listening to Him? Church member, Jesus has the answer, but are you listening to Him? Are you ready to follow Him? I don't care about what we see. I don't care about what's going on externally. Let us listen to Him. He has the answer. He will save you. He will go before you. He will fight your battle. He will bring a breakthrough. Amen. But we must be listening. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you and we thank you, Lord, for your word, for the promises of your word. I pray for anyone who is listening to this right now. I pray for the members of our English ministry. I pray for the visitors who have come, for the visitors who are listening. I pray for anyone who is hearing this message right now. God, that you would break through for them right now. That you would show them, Father, that you are Lord, that you are King, that you are in control, that nothing takes you by surprise. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You say what you mean, you mean what you say, and we know that you're coming soon, Father. Let us be ready. Let us be listening. Help us, O oh Lord, today. Bless each one here today, from our pastor and his family, to the children who sit and sleep in the pews. Bless our visitors. Bless our community. God, bring revival in this last hour. Let your spirit be poured out upon us, God. Have mercy upon us. We need you, and we call upon you, and we ask all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.